This whole premise for me today, <clears throat> trying to unpack in such a way that I can clarify it for you, and that is that <clears throat> when we pray, we want to pray with a mindset of kingdom building, kingdom living, kingdom existence, if you will. Um, if you look, for example, in Matthew chapter number 16, I'm reading from, hmm, guess for context, I'll go back to 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he uh, asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? <clears throat> so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so I want to just explore a little bit in the context of praying, the whole concept that it is not merely uh, praying because we have one specific need and then we go away about our business, but rather it is that God, as the model prayer Christ taught us, says, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Think about it. In heaven, there's no sickness. And so we're inviting heaven down on earth to dwell, if you will, to, to exist so that we can walk in the kingdom of God. And I, I want to talk a little bit about this because then what I want to talk about in terms of uh, prayer makes sense within this context. And so if you look, I try to think of an example that might help to uh, explain what I mean. If you have a neighbor who doesn't really talk much to you, really you don't see very often, but when they need something, you know, they need a cup of sugar, they need an egg, they need a cup of flour, they show up at your door. Then you might have a different type of neighbor who, if you go out of town, they'll watch your house. If you go away, uh, they will pick up the newspapers. Uh, if you're celebrating a birthday, they'll come over and give you a gift. Uh, if you have a cookout, they'll come by and shoot the breeze. Uh, you might just get together periodically and go shopping together. That neighbor is different from the first because that neighbor is in your life, uh, if you will, doing life with you, as we call it around First Baptist. The other just takes advantage of whatever you got and really doesn't have any relationship with you. The first is an example of a person who just wants to be saved so that they can go to heaven when they die. Uh, the first is the person who wants to come by and pray at the church when they get sick, but they show up rarely otherwise. Or when they are going through a crisis, they cry to God. The second, the person who's doing life with you reflects the kingdom of God. It reflects the person that says, God, I'm not simply here to get something. I'm here because I want to abide with you. Uh, you might remember the scripture I shared with you guys way back in Mark, in Mark chapter number one. Verse 14 says, now, uh, after. I'm sorry. I didn't share this one with you before. Mark 1, 14 says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So he didn't just come and say, get saved. He said, come because the kingdom of God is here. 
what's the kingdom of God? That domain, that dominion, if you will, that that uh, area, for lack of a better way of putting it, where God reigns. Are, are you in the kingdom of God? Is your life a part of the kingdom of God? Or are you the one that just runs by to get something when you need it? And then you live in a different kingdom. If you want to walk in the kingdom of God, it means adopting a lifestyle and a, a surrenderedness, not a perfected lifestyle because we are being perfected. So don't hear me say that. But a lifestyle that says, God, I want your will to be done in my life. That when I'm making choices and decisions about things that I'm going to say or do or who I'm going to be with, I'm bearing in mind what is in accordance with your will and your word. I'm not led strictly by how I feel about it. I'm not led strictly about trying to be popular or fit in with the crew. I'm led by your Holy Spirit. I'm yielding myself as best I know how so that I can obey your will and do things according to your way. So that when you look upon my life, you please. And even greater is I'm entering into your realm, your your kingdom in my lifestyle. So that moves me from a person who's merely dropping by when I'm sick to get healed or crying out when I have a loved one to get healed to a person who says, Lord, I want to abide with you. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, believe, and be saved. This was the verse I also wanted to share. This is Mark as well, chapter three, verse, I'm going to start with 13. And he went up on a mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. The power of God, of course, comes because the Holy Spirit abides on the inside of us as we dwell in the kingdom of God, in the, in the mindset of, of abiding with God, of being with God, of yielding to God, of, of wanting to be, have his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just a drive-by, not just uh, a borrow what I need when I need it and keep it moving but I want to abide in your kingdom, God. And I'm emphasizing this because it's something that, you know, over the last couple of days I've been kind of meditating on. And I believe as we yield ourselves to the mindset of one who wants to live in God's kingdom, we avail ourselves of the power and the authority that Jesus bestowed upon us versus somebody who just treats it like, mm, I don't know, going to the to the palm reader to get your palm read, you know, just another gimmick, so to speak, versus somebody who abides and wants to live according to the will and the kingdom of God mindset that he has given us. <clears throat> last verse I want to share, well, I don't know if it's the last, but at least this one <laughs> is 1 Corinthians chapter Four, verse 20 talks about the kingdom for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power so you can honor me with your lips the Bible says but your heart can be far from me the power and the anointing and the presence of God in your life comes as you abide as you are saturated in his presence uh, as, as his, his uh, likeness becomes imbued on you, so to speak. You know how that old adage goes when you start hanging around with a person long enough, y'all start looking alike. Your habits start being alike. You, you sound alike. When you start hanging out with Christ, when you start abiding with him, when you start spending time with him, then you start looking like and sounding like and walking in the authority and the power like him because that's the kingdom of God. That's the, that's the residue, if you will, of, of abiding in him. And so I'm saying all that to say, when we want the fullness of God operating in our lives, if you wanna be able to seriously say, 
I can lay hands on the sick and see a result. Um, I can speak those things that are not as though they were and see a result. If I can operate in the principles that God has laid out in this word because I abide in his kingdom. I live with him. I'm not just dropping by. I want to be in his presence at all times. Now, going back to where I was with the mindset of the kingdom, then what God has been dealing with me about is the keys to the kingdom. Going back to Matthew 16, verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the ability to bind something on earth. When you bind something, that's in essence, you know, you look at the Hebrew tradition, that means something that you wanted to stop, something that you wanted to hinder, something that you wanted to curtail, uh, keep from manifesting, so to speak, keep from having freedom, keep from operating. My plug is coming up. Okay. And as a consequence of that, we want to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, bind anything that is contrary to the kingdom of God. We want to hinder anything that doesn't line up with God's will and God's way. We bind the spirit of infirmity. We bind anything that doesn't align itself with God's will. And <clears throat> this really hit me really hard because I've had this experience. I remember somebody sharing it with me when I was a wee one in the gospel of how they were in Africa on a missions trip. And there was a, a huge storm expected. You know, they had traveled halfway across the world. And they was expecting this huge storm that was going to hit, that was going to hinder them from being able to have this huge crusade that had been planning. They had a tent set up and all of that. And so they began to pray. You know the story of Elijah, how when he wanted to stop rain, he said, it's not going to rain for three years. And it didn't. And then likewise, when he wanted it to rain, he began to pray. And then you see the little ball in the sky and then eventually the, the uh, great storm came. Likewise, when Jesus was on the water and a storm squall, I believe it was called, rose up, he rebuked it. He said, peace be still. And it stopped. <clears throat> Just recently, I was on the beach. <clears throat> yeah, I did drink some tea. <clears throat> but my sinuses are not happy today, so pray for me. Um, recently, I was on the beach, and it was predicted that it would rain that particular day. And I remember looking up at the clouds, starting to kind of ease their way toward me. And I hadn't been out there that long, and I wasn't ready to go back in yet. And I stopped, and I prayed, in the name of Jesus, peace be still, clouds go away. Now, somebody looking at me like I'm a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. But guess what? The clouds went away. It didn't rain until way later after I left. All I'm saying is, if we are going to do this thing and truly apply these principles and do it the way God intended, as we enter into the kingdom mindset and uh, abide in the kingdom and abide in Christ and abide in his word, the things that we see in scripture will manifest in our lives if we operate according to kingdom principles. So the one I want to deal with today is binding, hindering, taking authority over what is not of God. I bind, blah, 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 in the name of Jesus. Imagine if all of us got on one accord, every person who names the name of Jesus, 
every person who claims to be a child of the Most High, who is serious about their walk, who has yielded themselves to the power of God, if we all begin to speak on one accord that we bind a pandemic called COVID-19, what would happen if we got an agreement and said we bind COVID-19 in the name of Jesus and we command it to leave in Jesus' name? What would happen if we all begin to use the keys to the kingdom that God has given to us? And not with a faint, uh, haphazard hope it works, throw it up to the ceiling and see if something happened kind of mindset, but a mindset that says we collectively have been given authority over all the works of the enemy, over all manner of sickness and disease. And last time I checked, COVID-19 fell into that category. What would happen if we begin to speak to that thing in our authority on one accord and ask God to allow heaven to come to earth and to drive this uncleanness from our midst. I'm challenging us to start thinking kingdom mindset, to not just think like the neighbor who comes by to borrow a cup of sugar, but the one who lives here, who abides with you, who, who does life with you, that God, we want your kingdom in earth realm. What does that mean? That means I'm willing to give up my sinful nature. I'm willing to give up my ungodly attitudes. I'm willing to yield to say, even when I don't like it, even when my flesh don't want it, I surrender all, God. So that it's not just, I'll give you dominion over the sick part of me. I give you dominion over all of me. That's kingdom mindset. That means my money, my time, my talent, my attitude, my lifestyle, whatever you want me to do, God, show me in your word. And that's how I'll live. Because when we get in that kind of mindset, COVID-19, I don't believe would have a chance. And so I'm going to say it's not today, but we're going to. I'm going to set a time, like the scripture says, set a clarion call that we can all agree that on this particular day or days, we are going to turn down our plate and we're going to come in agreement and we're going to cry out to God and we're going to see what God would do. And we're going to cry out against that which not, is not of God and bind it in Jesus' name. I have testimonies after testimony of how people, when they got on one accord and began to pray for just a person, saw miraculous things take place. I can remember so many of these kinds of testimonies. One that jumps out right now is actually recorded by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. They got on one accord and began to pray for a brother called Calvin who was strung out on crack living in a doghouse. They prayed him back into the kingdom. They begin to say, Lord, don't even let him enjoy the drug anymore. Just draw him here. It was on a Tuesday night. He was in a crack house, at a crack house, living in a dog house in the backyard. He said he just felt compelled to get up and go. He got on the subway and he came to church that night. They just kept praying, God, bring him. God, break that addiction. That night, he walked straight down the aisle. His wife said, just like a bride. And he surrendered his heart to Christ and never looked back because they got on one accord and they bound that thing. So I'm saying to us today, let's begin to operate with a kingdom mindset. Let's move in the power and the authority that God has given us.